Yes, th this is always a very challenging situation, um, not only because it is, of course, devastating, um, both for the mother and the child, but uh, especially and for the physician, this is critical, is the lack of evidence on the best uh, management. Because systematically pregnant uh, women are excluded from randomized clinical trials and really most intervention studies. So this is always something that is there. Uh, so pregnant women are, are always excluded. So evidence is really lacking. But still, this is not so rare. Um, it, research shows that uh, the estimation is about 30 cases per every thousand, 100,000 pregnancies. So there, it is uh, three times the, the incidence seen in the general population of young adults outside pregnancy. So it is a risk factor and uh, we should really um, define better the treatments for, for this particular uh, condition uh, during pregnancy. Uh, concerning the diagnosis, uh, there are uh, increasing evidence, uh, which is good, that especially in emergency situations when MRI is not readily available, has acute ischemic stroke, it is okay to use non-contrast CT of the head. It is acceptable because the amount of radiation is really minimal and we should definitely reduce uh, the possibility of any delay. So that is uh, okay and we do have recommendations now on 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 that uh, specific um, decision. Also, we do have observational evidence, not trials, but uh, observational evidence collected in recent years, especially really the last years, uh, showing that pregnant patients with ischemic stroke, we should probably consider the same decision-making process as we do for any patient in the acute treatment. Um, then, of course, we have to tailor always the the decision to accommodate all the additional issues like increased risk of bleeding and, and other issues with radiation. But uh, so we, we do have to make an individual decision and discuss with the obstetrics team, but uh, we should follow the same uh, considerations during the management of these patients. For example, uh, for uh, endovascular treatment, there is increasing evidence that probably it is safe to do it of course, trying to protect uh, the fetus from the radiation, but um, it is um, the outcomes seem to be very similar. And also probably uh, also intravenous thrombolysis, it is safe in most pregnant women, of course, not in the early period because of, of the risk of bleeding, but during pregnancy and after, of course, all the considerations, because it is outside of, of high quality evidence, um, there is increasing evidence that it should be considered. Um, so um, um, has another types of stroke, for example, cerebral venous thrombosis that um, is also more common in pregnant and puerperal uh, women. Uh, the, it is the same, so treatment should be uh, also anticoagulation, which is the standard treatment in CBT for all patients. But we do have to tailor because we cannot use oral anticoagulation. So we, we have to use low molecular aid heparin usually during all pregnancy and uh, even after uh, delivery, at least in the first six weeks. Um, we also should use anticoagulation, but uh, indeed the management uh, is quite the same. It's just this minimal uh, assessment for the risks of some medications during pregnancy.